What's up, metal listeners? This is Mischief Madness, and you're now in the world of madness. I'm here hanging out with two members of Carnifex. I'm fucking here with Scott and Sean, and we're here at, in Austin, Texas, at the Texas Independence Fest. And it's so far, it's a really awesome day. So, how are you guys doing? Uh, I'm doing great. Uh, I just woke up. The sun's out. Uh, I haven't started sweating yet. So, so far, so good. You're doing a little better than me. I was up at uh, 9 a.m. to load in all my drums, so. <laughs> Did you guys go out last night? Was there a little pre-party? Uh, we played, we're on tour, so we played a show last night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we played in uh, Fort Worth last night. And it was an awesome show. It was a great, great turnout. Awesome. So and where are you guys, uh, who are you guys touring with and where are you guys headed to tomorrow? Uh, right now we're doing a quick headline tour where we're doing Die Without Hope front to back. And we're out with uh, Oceano, Phineas, and Enterprise Earth. Cool. So, um, uh, Die Without Hope, which came out in 2014 with Nuclear Blast, uh, was definitely one of your best albums to date. Uh, the songs definitely felt more progressive, and you know there was a, l- a lot of breakdowns, and they were just slower and deeper and harder. So, I really enjoyed Die Without Hope, and I know that there was a hiatus right before that. So, you guys came back, and you've recently celebrated your 10-year anniversary. Yeah, yeah, so we took the break in, uh, I think it was the end of... 2012? It was like the summer. We announced it uh, kind of like the fall of 2012, but we decided that we were going to do it kind of right after the last tour we did in the uh, beginning of the summer. Yeah, yeah. so we were just going through a bunch of shit back then with the label and a bunch of other stuff, so we ended up taking about 18 months off from touring, uh, and then when we came back, we were with Nuclear Blast, and... Um, we did the Die Without Hope record with uh, Mark Lewis out at Audio Hammer, and um, we've been touring on that album since November of 2013. And so this is the last tour for Die Without Hope. So two and a half years, we're good. Ready, ready for the new album. Yeah. Well, oh my gosh, we'll, we'll get into that. Don't don't get us excited. We'll get into that. So, I mean, I really enjoyed that documentary, The De- uh, Decade of Despair. It really sh- gave a great insight into the band, you know, what you guys have been going through and, you know, just how hard it's been, you know, for you guys to be on the road and, you know, getting back together. So tell me a little bit about that documentary. Um, we did that documentary with a good friend of ours, a guy named Alex Pressplay. Um, he actually worked with us again uh, coming up for some of the studio stuff we did and basically what we wanted to do was just kind of let people into our lives a little bit like more than Instagram or Twitter just to kind of see us and our mindset going into 10 years and everything that led up to it and if you know anyone that's in bands like this like even if you look at a band like us and a lot of people probably think oh we made it or whatever like it's still a grind and it's a ton of hard work and um, everyone makes money off of us but we don't really make much money ourselves so it's really just we're here to because we love it and it's it's just what we do so that was to let everyone get a closer look at us and see the work that we put in and really understand that that 10-year tour like actually meant something it wasn't just like a gimmick yeah it was was something for the fans that have seen us you know 10 12 13 times just something something for them to to see into our you know our psyche as as we came up on the 10-year 10-year mark so you know it's it's all because of them that we're able to do this and we're super super grateful for everything every time they come out and you know headbang with us it was an extremely bittersweet moment watching that documentary like it was beautiful but with you know with everything that you know that's happened it's just it's it's really good and you know it was awesome to watch so that's thank you yeah so okay now let's get into it so i mean for those fans you know if you haven't heard of carnifex you got blast beats chugging gutturals breakdowns and that's just what who carnifex is and you know they've gotten better w- over time die without hope was a well, great one, one. <laughs> <laughs> i mean <laughs> <Shit> together <laughs> you know what i mean just i'm just teasing 
mind, that's all. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're right, so. <laughs> you guys have progressed as musicians. Sure, yeah, I mean, none of us, uh, like, ever took really lessons. Like, all of us pretty much self-taught, you know, so everything we've learned, we just learned from figuring it out, you know, so we none of us came from music school or music theory or whatever, it was just figured out as you go, so. Yeah, I mean, maybe, well, maybe Jordan took some lessons. Yeah, Jordan did, but I mean, you know, he's Jordan, guy. yeah, we, he's yeah, we had well, like four records prior, so. Yeah, we Greatest were, we, 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 in the world, we were self-taught, no thanks, Dad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so tell me what's, what's next, what, what did you guys just accomplish? Uh, okay, so we, we wrote, we spent the last two years writing a new record, so basically as soon as we got out of the studio with Die Without Hope, we started writing. Because we're we take our time with writing and we and we rewrite a lot, so we probably rewrote the whole record I don't know, five times, a lot. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like we write and we rewrite. That's just a process for us. So it it takes a while to get through all those phases. And um, we went to this Audio Hammer again. So the same studio we went to last time. Uh, we recorded with Jason Sukoff this time instead of Mark, but Mark is going to be mixing the album. And we also worked with Mick Kinney, uh, kind of in the pre-production phase to help us with arrangements and just be an objective sixth person that can say, hey, that's great, don't change it, that sucks, do something different. And he did a lot of programming uh, on the album too, so we have a lot of atmosphere and keyboards and stuff like that that wasn't really as prominent on the previous albums. So that was a big part that he contributed and it, it, gives, us, it gives this album a really unique sound. I think some people are going to be like, what is all this, you know, programming garbage? And then some people are going to be way into it. So it's different, uh, and that's what we were going for. It was really like, let's do something that's still us, but that isn't on any of the previous albums. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, the, you know, we experimented with uh, using eight-string guitars on previous albums. first one was uh, the uh, Death Wish from Until I Feel Nothing. That was on the, that was super low on an 8-string, and then uh, we had a couple songs off of Die Without Hope, Hatred and Slaughter and Rotten Souls, and now this next album is, you know, we, we got a taste of it, and we like it, so the whole album's on 8-strings, <laughs> in F. So, yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be super heavy, you know. I'm excited, so what, what else can you tell us about the new album? I think, you know, honestly, like, trying to be objective, uh, I, I really don't think there's going to be a record that coming out that sounds like that you know we were actually kind of just talking about it earlier when you look at the bands that are left in our deathcore scene it's basically us and suicide and Whitechapel. and if you look at us like back in 06 kind of when we all just were getting going i guess we were probably interchangeable to some degree we all had very similar sound and then looking at us now 10 years later we all sound very different you know suicide sounds very different from Whitechapel. we sound very different from from them and White Chapel, so it's exciting to me to see us all still not only be here, but all we all really found our own identities. And this record for us is even more out just by ourselves, which is great. I'm glad that we're writing a record that I, I really don't think it's going to sound like anyone else. So, and hopefully, it kind of kicks something off. I think it will. I think we're going to see some bands like incorporating more of the black end sound into their music and 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 more of the programming and stuff like that. Oh yeah. Well, here I get like. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate your guys' time here um, with me on in your on your trailer while we do this interview. <laughs> it's not very bizarre. <laughs> We're now in complete and utter darkness. Um, but I'll tell you more about that later when during the show. But I want to thank you guys for spending some time with me and telling me about the new record. So this is Mischief Madness. You guys just spent some time with Scott and Sean from Carnifex. And you're listening to the World of Madness. Keep it brutal.